Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at the Dixon Q test. Typically the Dixon Q test comes up in undergraduate statistics courses because it's a useful way of getting used to the whole process of hypothesis testing. So a hypothesis test is really essentially a strength of evidence about a particular hypothesis that is sort of evident in the data. So use the Dixon Q test to determine if there's an outlier present in this sample. That's a hypothesis that is of interest here. We'll call that the alternative hypothesis when the time comes. You may assume a significance level of 5%. Now, this is an important matter in hypothesis testing. What is the significance level? I won't really get into it, but it's an important matter. I'll just highlight that fact. So just draw attention to, draw attention to that and make a note of that for further study. Anyway, this is our sample. So what we want to do is test if any of those values are essentially different from any of the rest. So essentially, that's the, the whole point of it. That's a very vague definition of an outlier, but essentially it's not really the point of what we're doing. It's really sort of studying the, the whole process of what hypothesis testing is about. Anyway, so the first part of the process will be stating the null and alternative hypothesis. The next part will be testing, computing the test statistic. The next part would be calculating, not calculating, stating the appropriate critical value from statistical tables, and then finally making a conclusion. So this set of questions sort of encapsulates the whole process of a hypothesis test. It's not the only process. It would be sort of when you use critical values, this would sort of cover the process. There are other sort of other processes, for example, p-values. We won't get into those. So anyway, sort of just get used to this sort of process. So the first thing we're going to do is arrange the data into ascending order. So there we have the data from lowest value to highest value. Just as a quick remark, there are actually nine items, okay? And that means that we're gonna state 127, which is the fifth item in the overall ranking as the median, okay? Now, the thing we have to do now is determine which value is the potential outlier. So. There's multiple ways of doing this, and this is sort of subjective, and it's a lot of cases it'd be sort of fairly obvious from the data, and even still in some questions you'll actually be told explicitly what it is. So what we're going to do is look at the distance to the median, numeric distance, that is 20 to the median, whereas that is only 12. So sort of going with 107 here, and again you notice that there's a gap there of 10 between 107 and and the next lowest value, which is 117, where here it's only four, okay? So there's a gap there of four. So anyway, my potential outlier is the lowest value, which is 107. So now we can formally state the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, which we're gonna denote as H0, is that there are no outliers present in the data. H1, there is an outlier present in the data, and you can sort of state it as 107. So it's important, this is sort of the first step in hypothesis testing when you're doing pen and paper exams with critical values to sort of state the null and alternative hypotheses like this. Conventionally, you might even put in a mathematical expression here, but really for Dixon Q tests, this, there's nothing really appropriate. But anyway, the first thing is you get used to this sort of stepwise process of building a hypothesis test with this being the first step, a formal statement of null and alternative hypotheses, okay? The second step would be to calculate the test statistic. The test statistic is essentially a metric of how much evidence we have to support the alternative hypothesis, okay? And we'll come to how, how we would use that later on. So for the Dixon Q test, the test statistic, which we're gonna denote as QTS, Q for Q, Dixon Q test, and TS for test statistic, that is the gap divided by the range. The gap is the difference between the outlier and the next value. In this case, the next value is 117, so our gap is 10, okay? So just look at that there. These two values here, that is uh, how we deduce the gap. And the range is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value, which is 139 minus 107, that is 32. So our test statistic is essentially 10 divided by 32, okay? And that gives us a test statistic of 0.3125. So that's the second step, the calculating the hypothesis, uh, the test statistic. The third 
step would be calculating, not calculating, but de de uh, determining the critical value for, of the of the test. Now, just before we calculate, or the, calculate, we don't calculate it, we just look it up in tables. Before we look at the critical value, we confirm that the size of the data set is n equal to 9. And essentially, critical values are usually determined from statistical tables. What we also must do here is actually use a particular significance value, which is denoted alpha. So essentially 5% or 0 0.05. So essentially our significance level is this column here. The row we are to use dep is dependent on the sample size. So that is N. So this is our test statistic. N equals nine because that's the sample size. Now that's particular to the Dixon Q test that would use the sample size. There's later on you'll be using degrees of freedom which are derived in the sample size but are not the sample size. And anyway, this column here. So essentially our test statistic here is 0 0.493. Okay, QCV is 0 0.493, that's the critical value. So this is how we make our decision, and this is the fourth step of our four step process. If the test statistic is greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. If not, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So it's essentially a straightforward numerical procedure, numerical comparison. The test statistic is a sort of a metric of how much evidence there is to support the alternative hypothesis whereas the critical value is a sort of threshold it must cross for it to be sufficiently plausible have sufficient evidence behind it so it's a sort of a, a threshold that must be crossed so here the test statistic is 0 0.13 0 0.3125 is not greater than the critical value that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis that is to say we fail to reject the notion that there are no outliers in the data so essentially there's nothing not enough evidence to say this is an outlier okay just just the, new, the numbers don't add up so at a five percent significance level there's no justification to treat the minimum value which is 107 as an outlier it's not sufficiently distant from the rest of the data okay let's look at it there now uh, just as a quick remark the main thing really is not about learning how to calculate outliers and determine outliers. The main thing is really getting used to the process of hypothesis testing. So that is where the real lesson is here. Getting used to doing these steps.